before January 6th, you were a lawmaker in the state of West Virginia, right? That is correct. I'd just been elected to the state house in 2020, and I was the first Republican to win my district in 98 years and won a landslide victory. Okay. Then I assume you went to the Trump rally, right? Listen to him t- speak? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then marched down to the Capitol building with everybody else? That is correct. Okay. So give us a thumbnail sketch of your day uh, from that point on. What happened? Yeah, so I found myself on the east side of the building, and as everybody who follows January 6th probably knows by now, most of the things everyone's seen on the news in terms of the the quote-unquote violence and destruction, the worst attack on the Capitol since, you know, in in history, everybody forgets that the Democrats bombed the Capitol in the 80s, but um, (laughs) they they, they continually leave that that part out. But Mm -hmm. uh, I I I was on the other side of the building, so I didn't see any of those things taking place that day, and so... It was, it was the most patriotic day of my life. I mean, there were uh, uh, patriots from all over this country waving flags. There were women and children. There were veterans in wheelchairs. Uh, by and large, uh, no pun intended, a mostly peaceful protest. Um, I was outside the, the east rotunda doors. The doors opened up from the inside. It's those big magnetic doors. We've seen the videos now mm-hmm. of the guy who goes over, tries to open the doors. Nothing happens. He points up to the camera and turns back, and the doors open up. Those are the doors I entered. Um, hmm. I walked. I walked through, uh, open set of doors. Uh, saw a police officer. Went over and immediately thanked him. Uh, t- told him God bless. This is all on video, so people can watch it for themselves. They don't take my word for it. He gives me a friendly fist bump, inviting me into the building. I spend less than ten minutes inside the public rotunda area, reminding people to be peaceful and non you know, non destructive. Mm-hmm. Walked back out the same set of doors I entered. And ultimately found myself facing 24 years in prison as the weaponized deep state came to my house, oh my ripped gosh. me away from my wife and my four young children, and threw me in prison. Oh, my gosh. And when did that happen? How long did it take from, you know, January 6th for that to happen? Well, so um, I, I had a pretty good following on social media back then uh, before they you know, deplatformed me. I had around 70,000 followers on Facebook. I live-streamed the entire event. Yeah. It didn't take them long to find me because I, I, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong i thought maybe i would get like a hundred dollar ticket like most of those people who when they pound on the doors during the kavanaugh hearings and all uh-huh. those things, that's what i thought would happen and so i was arrested january 8th two days after january 6th january one of the first 8th. people arrested yep. so were you would you describe what you did as parading or milling which heinous crime was it that you committed there uh-huh. inside? Yeah, the absolutely. I would say that the heinous crime, truly in the eyes of the government, is being a conservative who had the cur- elected yeah. Yeah. representative who had the courage to uh, to go into the middle of the swamp and speak out against the tyranny that we find ourselves living under today. And what did they what did they charge you with exactly? So because I was arrested so early, my whole even for January sixth, my situation is very unique. I was originally charged with two misdemeanors. So the FBI came to my house and, and, and raided my home and ripped, took me away from my family over two simple little misdemeanors. I was never accused Jeez. of any violence or destruction for the, for the record as well. And so, cause I never did those things, but right. so two misdemeanors of basically trespassing and like you said, parading or whatever. <laughs> then they came back like a month or two later, added two more misdemeanors because um, uh, for whatever reason, it was the same charges, just different wording. Then, they offered me a plea deal to choose your misdemeanor, and we'll drop all the other charges. Then they withdrew that plea deal, and then they hit me with a fifteen twelve obstruction official proceeding, which is a twenty year felony. Oh man! And so that's where the twenty four years comes from. <sighs> it's not even a constitutional. The Supreme Court is potentially going to hear that uh, particular charge. It's all about tampering with a witness. It was hmm. created during the insider bank trading with Enron and all of that back in the two thousands. So it doesn't even pertain to January 6th, and they're, they're taking that because it's a 20-year felony and uh, slapping that on uh, peaceful, uh, nonviolent January 6th prisoners that they want to really stick it to. And that's what they're – it's not it's not unique to myself at all. Right. A lot of j 6s have been hit with that. So, how, yeah. long, how long did you uh, spend in jail? So, yeah, so – Throughout the whole ordeal, I had an 18-month legal battle. Uh, luckily, I was home uh, with that on, on bond and pretrial detention. Yeah. Uh, and then I ended up serving three months in federal prison, and I did eight days of solitary confinement because I refused the COVID vaccine while they were holding oh. me up. Oh, my, <laughs> oh my uh, god! And you had a great view, I remember. Uh, I, I, I heard you with uh, Alex Cuesta. Uh, I, heard, I heard about your wonderful <clears throat> view uh, from your cell, right? What was that all about? 
You know, man, it's, it's God is amazing. I always, I was always taught and raised to try to find uh, the positive and the beauty in, in every situation you find yourself in, and um, and so that you really use that in that moment. And so I'm in, I'm in, I was on the third floor, uh, and once again, this is all by the grace of God, as far as I'm concerned. And I was facing west, and so out my cell, uh, which the first little bit I was in a cage, so it was really hard. I mean, you can't even stick your finger through there but if you, if you look really hard you can you can kind of look through there and um so they had a cage over top of the bars that i was i was in and so across this little walkway was like a big for lack of better words a window it was just a you know had bars and a cage and stuff over top of it as well but uh to my left i could see a a tree and a fire hydrant and um i would walk and i, I didn't know where it was it's all i could see outside other than the, than the building uh across from me uh, but I would watch the shadows on uh, the tree and the fire hydrant, and I'd wait till they got to a very distinct spot, and I'd ask the guard, "Hey, what time is it?" And most, some of the guards wouldn't tell you, but most of the guards would. And so by the you know end of day two, beginning of day three, I could tell the time, which was a huge mental battle in, uh. in solitary confinement. You don't have any concept of time, and so getting that uh, concept of time was a huge uh, mental win for myself. We just found out last week or the week before, that they've got this uh, air marshal program where they follow J6ers. And any, in fact, doesn't even have to be January 6th, but people who traveled to the D.C. region during the, during the month of January in 2020, 2021 uh, are being followed now by air marshals. Are you experiencing that? Oh, yeah. I'm on the quad S list. Oh, they've, my uh, they've, they've, they've really blessed me Jeez. with that. It's been, yeah, I get private security going through the airport. <clears throat> it's... Uh, you know, mm. and uh, it, it's really what they do is just it is unbelievable. You can't check in online. Um, you have to check in in person at your like your airline's desk. And so mm-hmm. uh, I get there to check in and uh, they have to get on the phone. They spend about 15 minutes just asking, you know, silly, simple questions. Are you travel alone? Are you checking any bags? Blah, blah, blah. And then they finally, after about 15 minutes, they print off your boarding pass. And that's four S's in the top left corner, four S's in the bottom right corner. It's the highest classification you can have and still fly on an airplane. It was meant for the international domestic terrorists, but they're using it here in America. Yeah. So then you get the TSA. They come out. They pull you to the side. They, they come out, and they have this piece of paper and read off this disclaimer. And it's about two minutes long, but the gist of it is once you start this process, you have to continue. Do you wish to continue? So then you go through the normal the normal stuff. And uh, for lack of time, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, sake of time, I'll try to you know just get through the main points. And then so – then they swab your hands for explosives. Then they um, they give you the most intense pat down you've ever had. And I've been to prison, so believe me, I've had some intense <laughs> pat downs. They touch every square inch of your body, inside your clothes, outside everything. Uh. Then they you go over and stand behind some pexy glass. They will these machines out and they they unpack your entire bag that you're you're traveling with. They swab everything in there for explosives, the inside of the bag, outside of the bag, and then. You pack everything back up. You go to wait at your gate, and before you get on the airplane, they rule the machines over there, and they do the whole thing all over again. They do the pat down, take everything out of your bag. If you have a connecting Unreal. flight, if you have a connecting flight, they follow you, and then they, they go to your gate, and they, you do the whole thing all over again. But um, I had non TSA agents waiting for me in uh, Charlotte when I was I had a I had a connecting flight there. Non TSA agents. I guess they think I'm Jason Bourne. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> My gosh. We're speaking with uh, Derek Evans, candidate for Congress, for U.S. Congress in West Virginia. You can go to DerekEvans.com. It's two R's. DerekEvans.com. What do you ultimately want to accomplish as a, <clears throat> as a representative from West Virginia? Well, look, this is one of the reddest districts in the entire country, and I think that we deserve a true conservative representing us as someone who's going to stand on the national stage and beat the drum of freedom, not only for our district here in West Virginia, but for every single conservative across this country. Obviously, we got to secure the border and unleash American energy, which will help with inflation. But mm-hmm. the weaponization of government is something that I know all too well about, and I don't yeah. think that, uh, it's, it's no fault of their own, but no one in Congress understands this issue on a personal level the way that I do. So I want to bring that unique experience and everything I've went through on a, on a personal level and kind of open the eyes of some of the other uh, you know, people who I believe are, are patriots in Congress, and maybe we can get some changes made here before this starts. You know, look, they, they've already, as you mm. said, too, they've already asked for a list of every single person who, who shared and interacted with President Trump on Twitter. Yeah. And so they've labeled MAGA oh, as domestic terrorists. <laughs> Everybody's on a list. They're coming oh after everyone. Gosh. I'm trying to stop that from happening. Yeah. I Man, I sympathize. Uh, this must be uh, so 
so frustrating for you and your family and frightening, too. I mean, you got the federal government coming down on you for going inside the rotunda. Unbelievable. Yeah, and has this devastated your family's finances after this long legal battle for 18 months, man? Oh, that's that's their their goal, man, is they financially bankrupt everybody. So when you first get arrested, one of the first things they do is they they collect all your bank records. You have to turn Mm. over every single checking account, savings account, all this information to them. So they see all of this. They watch it. And they, that's their goal is they financially drain you. So, yeah, pretty much every J6er has been bankrupted. And furthermore, this mm. corrupt government right now, this corrupt court system, we have J6ers who have been, you know, have to give us 10 goes. They're, they're raising money just to, you know, keep from going homeless and, and to survive. And let's just, I'm just making up numbers. Let's say you raise $15,536. Well, they get the court to sentencing, and now the judge is saying, oh, we're going to fine you $15,536 in restitution. They're, they're, they're taking all the money Gosh. that American patriots across this country have raised for these families. It's not even Grotesque. for the defendants, really. It's more for the families. It's despicable. It's un-American. It is. It's unconstitutional, and yet they continue to do it. Derek, good luck in your effort. Uh, I guess there's a better website. It's Evans for West Virginia, evans4wv.com. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that would be the one, evans4wv.com. Okay. Look, we've got over 4,000 patriots across this country mm-hmm. who have contributed to our campaign. We're truly blessed and honored by that. We're, uh, we're polling at 45% right now against the six-year uh, Rhino. It's the closest race in the entire country for someone challenging an incumbent in the primary. We'd love to have anybody support if they're willing to do so. And if not, at least add us to your prayers. This is a, a spiritual yeah. battle of good versus evil. So thank you. Really feel for your struggle. Um, appreciate what you're doing. Thanks a lot, Derek. Good luck.